Today we're going to be talking about competition skating and we're also going to discuss uh, beginner skating and training. Today I'm standing with Paul Hinton. He's the coach at Bristol Skateway in Bristol, Tennessee. And do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, what do you need to know? Let me see. I began skating in 1962, uh, skated competitively for many, many years. And then around 1973, I ended my skating and then we opened our first skating rink in 1976. And that's where I began coaching and teaching. And I've been coaching and teaching ever since. Okay. So let me ask you this. This is the, the primary focus. How does someone get into competition? Should we start at the point of like somebody learning to skate? Right. Um, it actually begins with the, even the Saturday morning classes. That's where most people start. You know, uh, they, they come in, they learn the basics of skating, and for some reason it bites them, and they decide they want to do more with it than just roll forward and roll backwards or, you know, maintain their balance while they're skating. They want to learn to do things like standing on one foot, three turns, uh, simple jumps, things of that nature, and spins. Um, then, you know, from there they will graduate to the intermediate class and there we'll start working on skating backwards, forwards, learning to turn on one foot, learning to turn on two feet, turn from forward to backward, things of this nature. Um, and when kids are comfortable with that or kids decide that they want to do something a little more with it, then they come and approach me about taking private lessons and, and then we discuss whether you just want to take private lessons for the fun of it to, to, to get better at what you're doing or whether you have a desire to compete. And if they have a desire to compete, then that's how they get involved in competitive skating. So you have, a, you have styles of coaching and we've discussed this before where uh, we had a person on, on YouTube, on Skateways uh, YouTube, had made a comment that she felt like you were being too harsh on the, on the children. Mm -hmm. And um, so your styles uh, of coaching can differ, you know, in the sense that if you get new students, you warm up to them. You, uh, in, co in competitive, there's a little bit more of a, I don't want to call it a no mercy type of thing, right. but it's, it's, as I brought up once before, it's when a child falls, for instance, and don't help her up. Come on, try again, leave her alone. She's big enough to do it on her own. She's got it, once again. And some people have, you know, looked at that like, wait, 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 you know, they, they're on the ground. Right. What is the reasoning behind that? And, and even uh, certain ways that you speak to the students are a little bit more, um, I'm trying, strict. Right. And I've, uh, you know, again, when, when you're dealing with a beginner skater, you know, the beginner skater can fall and get hurt. That's true. But the odds of them really falling and getting hurt are far less than doing competition skating and the jumps, the spins. You know, when, you, when you're when you talking about going across the floor at about 20 miles an hour, leaping up into the air and rotating one time around, two times around, three times around, landing on one foot, you're gonna take some falls, right. okay? And you know, those falls are usually caused, nine chances out of 10, because the child is not following the rules to which we set up for them to do these right. things. Um, I came up with a better one than the ABC one is basically when you, if you want the, the number to end up being four, you got two ways of doing that, two plus two or three plus one. But the minute you change any one of those numbers, mm -hmm. you're not gonna end up with the number four. All right you're gonna end up with another number. And, you know, again, sometimes the children, you know, they, they're trained, uh, we do it over, we do it over and over again. And then sometimes the, the skater takes their own license with it. And what ends up happening is they could fall. Um, you know, again, I can tell you I've had concussions through competitive skating. I, I've never, thank God, never broke a bone. But I've strained, pulled groins, pulled this, pulled that, you know, to the point that it put me off to the side. Right. Um, when you're dealing with someone who wants to go into this really competitively, then, you know, again, they have to understand that this is really competitive for them to get in. You know, a certain amount of stress, a certain amount of pressure has to be put upon them to get them to, to, to get to their top level. Um, so a lot of the things that you're doing when you're talking down to them, you know, not down to them, but in the sense of where you're, you're, you're not babying them. Right. Put it that way. That's exactly right. Um, you're teaching them instilling confidence, uh -huh. instilling discipline. Right. You know, which is important on the floor just to prevent accidents from happening. Uh, and then there's also the pressure of the crowds, you know, at these right. competitions. And then, like me, filming them around them. 
can create a the tremendous Germanis, amount of pressure where, you know, and so you're, you're kind of you're, gearing you're, them. I'm gearing them for the fact that when you step out, you know, at a, at a, a, a local meet, you know, you might have a hundred people watching you. Right. But when you're, when you're stepping out in front of someone at a national meet, you're talking about thousands of people, right. you know, and you're going to be standing there in front of them and you've got to be willing to deal with that and get to where it needs to go. Um, you know, again, skating competitively is very much so like ice in the effect of you have jumps, spins, you have figure, school figures, you have loops, uh, you've got dance, you've got creative solo, you've got so many different avenues that a child can go after to get what they what they want to do, or a young person. I mean, I see, I keep saying a child, but I've got a young man who's 42 years old who's returning to skating. Right for the first time and yeah he's which we have we have him on film yeah uh so ryan as well as three of your other students right uh lane dickinson and uh ava. and ava right. yes and uh uh, now, you know, again, we will tell you, yeah. Chris is, Ava's mom says, if, if child services ever approaches us, you know, you're going to have to come with me and explain that well, why she's got all these bruises all over right, her body. Right. Yeah. Okay. They think child. child. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not. I mean, you know, and she and, you know, again, she she handles the, the falls very, very well. She's 10 years old and I can't believe that she handle some of the falls that she yeah, takes there was the part in the and in the, we've shot a lot of video for this you know so at the you know towards the end of this you'll start seeing a lot more of the of their of your students mm -hmm. who i filmed but i wanted to kind of get all of this out but one of the things that happened was is that ava was practicing a routine for a competition in richmond and she took a hard she, fall she took a fall i wouldn't say it was hard but it she was hard many <laughs> Falls oh, right, that day, right, including hard ones on that elbow. elbow. Right, and I remember when she struck the ground, she held her elbow, mm -hmm. and then she, like, I looked over at her, and she's like, "No, don't, you know, kind of give me this gesture of don't help me up." And then she does this flare, <laughs> and then when the music stops, she grabs back and starts, you know, crying again, you know. And of course, you're you're on the sidelines, you know. Right. And, and there was a support element to that too as well. But the bottom line is, is that she finished her routine and you know completed it to its end even though she fell and was hurting well and yeah she she you know again she she does that more on her own than me doing something to cause that um you know the last competition was what uh, last weekend mm -hmm. uh ava took what was it six six first places and one second um mm -hmm. uh, lane took one two two first places and a and a second uh, Dickinson, the, the third one, uh, she took a second and a first. Um, we actually, the Richmond, the, Richmond, uh, the Richmond meet. Yeah, we actually took third in the high point with only, and Dawn, who skates figures only, she just did her figures, uh, she won her event. So we ended up with, you know, being third in the high point standings as far as, you know, what competitive skating, you know, for that meet. Um, and again, the, the other clubs were, had 10 and 15, 20 skaters in them that we were competing against. So we did very well and the kids are doing very well. Um, now, spe you, speaking, uh, speaking of your students, and I, sure. want, I didn't mean to cut you off, but when, uh, how old are your students? Let's start with Ava. She's, she's just turned 10. She's uh, about last month. She turned 10. Uh, we have quite a few of those running around here. Right. The, you know, some but the primary students that are on this one. Today, right. She's ten. So next up in line is uh, Dickinson. She's fourteen. Fourteen. Then Lane is seventeen, and then Ryan, who you got on there also, he's forty-two. And then Dawn. I don't know if you got any film I of do. her in this. Okay. She is fifty-two or fifty-three years old. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, this sport kind of goes all the way through. It goes from you know you can be a a four-year-old all the way up until right you know, 90s. I mean, and you coach them all. You coach all these age ranges. That's right. The and there's a, there's a, you know, and again, when you're dealing with children, you you want to make sure that they don't get hurt. And that's, that's the main, my main focus right. is to not only get them, see to it they're not getting hurt, but to see to it they're doing it correctly. Because right. again, it, when it's done correctly, it's pretty. It's very, matter of fact, when it's done correctly, everybody looks at it and says, well, that's too simple. Yeah. You know, I, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. We'll put skates on and come out and try it. <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't do that. OK, so when we talk about uh, getting into competition and a student comes in, uh, they may express, you know, some avenue of approach of, of a category. Right. Uh, that they want to get into. And can you name off the categories in regards to competition skating that exist now? Inline speed skating, 
you got quad speed skating. And that's where they run distances around the track, first, second, or third, that's the winner. Inlines compete with inlines, quads compete with quads. Yes, yeah, so inlines, there's, no, there's no comparison between the two, no yeah. No from chasing them. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and again, the, the inlines are, are set up with no friction on the floor and everything's in line, so they're designed for speed. Okay. Uh, the speed skate, believe it or not, um, is it, just named a speed skate. It actually it can be used as a quad skate also, but it's a low top boot. So that, they separated that from the high top boots, the low tops by calling them yeah. speed skates. Um, then there in the artistic skating, there is figure skating. And that's the circles that you see are laid down on the floor here in Bristol, the big circles. There's loop skating, that's the small circles to which you see laid down that has like what looks like a teardrop in it. Um, then there is um, dance skating, and dance skating literally is something kind of like ballroom dancing. Um, when you get to the world class level, it is very much so, so it's like, like an advanced couple skating. Right, but you you've got certain steps in waltzes and marches and tangos, and certain steps belong certain time, and you got to be in time with the music. And yeah, so from dance skating, you've got um, you've got creative solo, which is something you see Ava do, right. uh, where I'm where doing. right to where you you know do, you can do some twirls and tricks and things of this nature but it is governed you can't do just any jumps you can't do just any spins you got to you got to do within the realm of what they will allow you to do then uh from there uh from creative solo we'll go into freestyle freestyle is where the jumps and the spins and you know the turns and things of this nature it's all interpreted to the music and there's one more category called pair skating. And that's, again, we're a couple, but that's where a man will literally pick up a, his partner and hold her over his head right. and start turning down the floor. Yeah, uh, that's a whole different category of, of, of dangerous. But, you know, again, um, so those are basically the categories in both speed and art. And then, of course, you've got hockey that is done, uh, you know, on wheels. And so it's, you know, again, this sport is designed to be year round and it's designed to be for everyone from the ages of three up to 90. I mean, or as long as you can hold on, actually, yeah. Uh, now, b before I drift into the future uh, of, of competition, um, I asked you this once before, if you got an intermediate skaters, uh -huh. pe two people that were pretty proficient, uh -huh. how long could it take you to teach them a routine to couple skate, li do those lifts that you see where they're carrying, okay. the guys carrying? Well, again, we, you know, we could start that and we could do that very, very quickly. But, you know, my father once told me, and I'm a firm believer, to really create a champion, it takes three years mm -hmm. to, to really, from the ground level up into the actual, you know, being able to do that. You don't want to rush into these Right, things. you got, well, and that's another thing too, that you, you got to understand it's what, the skaters that you're, we're talking about, all of them only began lessons a year ago. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I worry sometimes that I've, I've pushed them too hard or pushed them too far too soon. Mm -hmm. uh, it hasn't proved out to be the case. They're all pushing on me now they want to all go on and do other things. I mean, Ava's looking me and wants a double sow cow. Ava, Ava wants an out of forward travel. Lane wants to, to start working on, uh, what was it? She was wearing outer back sit. Um, what is that? It's, it's a different way of doing a sit. You know, you've seen her do the sit spin where yes. she's down in the shoot the duck. Uh -huh. What's well, on the other foot going the, op or the oh, same direction. Wow. Uh, and so she's working on that. She's working on her double mate. That's got to be very hard when your brain's programmed to do this, like backwards skating in uh -huh. direction that you've never done the opposite. Right. You know, well, and again, Except that's the spinning. thing. Right. And that's the thing, too. The skating is, is amb an ambidextrous sport. Okay. You have to, whatever you learn to do on your right foot, you're supposed to learn right. to do on your left. So when, when we're talking about uh, as far as taking three years to do this. A lot of it has to do with safety. A lot of it, of course, has to do with making sure that they're proficient enough to- uh, Muscle memory, level, yes, right, right. And program them like a machine, right. which begs the question. This is something that I w noticed too as well. None of the students wear protective pads or helmets. Oh, yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, Lane and, and Dickinson um, have what's called crash pants. Okay. And so does Ava. They have crash, now as you far as elbow, yeah. right. As far as elbow stuff, no, but the crash pants, 
I insisted upon that, especially what, what with. Are those? The, it's basically it's a, they're called fall pants, and that's what they're for. They're designed for you to fall, and it, pe it protects your your backside right. and your lower back. You know, one of the things that I, I really work hard at because I know how hard it is for me to stand up at the age of 67 yeah. because of skating yeah. is make sure that they're not damaging their body more than what it should be. And I that's had no idea that they were wearing. That's how yeah. like you, you can't tell anything. No, nope. I'm always looking at them going, how do they do that? How are they so resilient to hitting this ground Sending, and getting up? Uh huh. You know, I'd be like, oh, even yeah. even at their age. Believe so me. <laughs> So Believe they have a lot me. Of padding going you know, on well, right, right. There's just padding right on the rear end, right, and it basically it comes up to the lower back, and you know, so it it pads all of this. So if she, they were to land forward, it actually would pad their hip bones and things of that Which nature. Which also begs, you know, also you know, points out the fact that they've learned how to fall. Right. Correctly. That's exactly right. That's what it's all about. And, you know, again, we're still having some issues like Ava now has, in some of the higher jumps she's doing, she's actually slapping her wrist down on the floor. Uh, she, she's not swollen. She's not purple, but she, it's sore and I can tell it's sore. So we've got to we've got to keep working on that. Uh, Lane, the same thing. Lane, Lane has developed some leg pain. Uh, but again, she's 17 years old trying to learn to do all this stuff. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's not too late, but it's a bit late. Uh, you know, most children, by the time they're 17, don't want the bruises and the falls and things right. of that nature. But this girl's hungry. Yeah. She wants to do this and that's do it. it requires, right? Yeah, and it, it's got to come from them. It can't come from me. It can't come from mom and dad. It's got to come from them. And if they want to do it, it gets done. Now, your daughter was a competition skater, and we're <sighs> talking about falls and the numerous because I know she went the distance with this. Right, she and won worlds. You can get into it, but she's taken probably more falls than you could ever count. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is there pain involved future in the life in, in regards to this sport? And then I know she came up in a different time and there's right. different, I think newer well, protective there, gear. Right, days. yeah, there was no have. protective gear when she was falling. Yeah, there was but none. Does that become a problem in the future in the sense of, of like where people are having, you know, like bend over all of us uh, you know the old artistic skaters usually have trouble with our lower back and, and it's yeah. because of the falling and that's the reason i've moved to the fall pants now ashley for was not a strong freestyle skater she never really wanted to do freestyle she was a dance figure skater yeah. she won nationals uh at the or worlds at the age of 14. um she, uh, let me see, she won nationals uh, in one event six times in another completely different event. She won it, I think, at least another six times. And I think as a, in a team dance situation, I think she won the nationals three times or four times. Uh, and this is all in the span of age from age of five up until around the age of uh, 17, 18. She, she was entering competition at five? Yeah, she was entering competition at three. At three. <laughs> yeah, so, she started skating at nine months. So, and, and of course, when you go to these competitions, you're traveling. You start out like in the United States and then you're moving on to different countries in the world. Yes, sir. So what countries did she go to? Uh, she went to Italy. She went to uh, Spain. She went to Australia. She went to, as a coach, she went to Portugal because I couldn't go. I sent her with one of my skaters mm -hmm. uh, as, a, as the coach. So she went to Portugal. So she's been to Europe three times out of skating and Australia once. Okay. Yeah, I've traveled all over, you know, again, I've been to uh, Brazil, Colombia, uh, Australia, New Zealand. This goes into the next thing that I wanted to get in was the expenses of this. Oh. So when, when a, a mother or a father is looking at their child who wants to be a competitive skater, what's the realistic approach, say in the beginning stage, what they would require all the way up to the point where they become champions at that point or working towards champions. It, it, it starts out, you know, fairly economical as far as what you need is a pair of skates. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't have to be the best skates in the world, just a pair of skates. And then, you know, once you start training and taking some lessons, things of that nature, maybe you take some tests uh, because they have what they call proficiency tests to where you, you climb the ladder and then maybe from there, you would go into your first competition. And that, for this area, the problem is, uh, you know, again, we're the only rink within about a two and a half hour uh, radius that, are, that is doing this, okay? Um, so that means we have to travel at least three hours to get to a place to, of competition, such as the Greensboro meet we went to. That's about three and a half hours away. 
Uh, you're talking about a weekend away from home. You're talking about motel, food. Uh, entry fees are not that super bad. They're you know, usually around, I think the first event is usually around $30 and then it's $10 for each additional event that you, that you enter into. Okay. Um, but you know, again, so that, you know, you're probably looking at for that weekend for them to go off and compete, you're probably looking at three, $400 by the time you do it for the family. And that's not what we're getting ready to go into when we go to Colorado. I mean, I've already got my airline ticket. That's $400 alone. Mm -hmm. the, we're, we're leasing a, a house out there. Um, and we're, we're actually with like four bedrooms and we've got four people or four groups going to stay. We're going to split the cost. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically, just in airline and, and the room, I'm looking at about $820 just wow. for me. Okay. And that's not including that food, the food. Right. The right. Yeah, right. So we can see that it increases, but it's not just that. It's also about the skates that they're wearing. So like you said, in the very beginning, it doesn't matter right. too much. But then when you're getting to that point, what is the average? And I know I understand that there's speed skating, there's right. artistic and whatever. But what's about the average that you would say that somebody would spend on a pair of skates to enter competition? Again, for session skating, the, the you know, again, for skating fast and turning speed skates, which is a normal, you're probably looking at about $200 to $225. Just so that you know, the, the average for an artistic pair of skates, because they're so specialized, mm -hmm. I'm going to say is right around eight hundred dollars. Right. And you know, again, when you're talking about big figures and small circles, that's two different pair of skates. Mm -hmm. And then when you're talking about freestyle, that's a third pair of skates. Right. So you start adding that eight hundred dollars up, <laughs> and you know, you go eight hundred, eight hundred, eight hundred. Now that parent's got quite a bit of money, you know, so socked into it. Uh, I know that like Rob, you know, who works here as a DJ, uh, you know, was a competition skater. He sure. was a speed skater. His skates alone cost twelve hundred. Right. And I've I've been on the floor with him and I can't catch him. Right. Here's another question. Do you have students that switch skates all the time because they're entering into different Yes, Ava Ava, Lane and Dickinson, all three of them have three different pair of skates. So every time that they enter like maybe a certain phase. And you gotta understand pair. those skates that they're they're in are at the level to which they're skating. They are not the best in the, you know, again, the plate that I'm talking about that they're on right now may be $300, $350. Right. The best plate that you can be on is $850. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, for somebody who has moved into the world level, not someone who's just going into the national level. Here's something that I know the audience is wondering right now. Uh -huh. Do they win any money? No. So there's no return on the investment in the sense that you spend all this money. You're exactly right. Except, you know, again, and I will tell you what, what they do. Here's the benefit, what they do learn, the discipline, mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the organizing and ordering of everything that they do in life. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, I can tell you my daughter has been, you know, on several interviews and they all sit back and say, what did it take to do what you did? How long did it take? And it was a lifetime. I mean, it's a lifetime of learning and doing. Um, and that's the problem we have here in the States. Now, you asked me that question about Europeans and South Americans, and the answer is completely different. Yeah. Okay? Their, their country will sponsor them, will pay for them to in skate. Roller in roller skating. will pay for them to skate if they are the elite. Back when uh, Kevin, my first world champion, um, was skating, um, there was a, a couple and they ended up after their skating career going on to a weekly Italian soap opera and became big stars on this Italian soap opera. Wow. So they were making that money. They'll, they'll buy your house, they'll buy your car. They, your education is already paid for. You know, the, it, it, but here in the United States, I mean, you've got, I mean, like you have Olympians, you know, that are out, they get on the Wheaties box. Right. Right. right? And mm -hmm. all these different sponsorships. Um, but there's none for roller skating. No. In the United States. I mean, so why? Why do it? Well, I mean, are they going to head into that at some point? Do you think that there will be? Has it ever been that way? No, again, that was the, the thing is that when I was skating, oh, we're going to be an Olympic skater. Now that's back in the 1960s. Yeah. We're going to be in the Olympics. 
uh, 1970s. Oh, we're going to be in the Olympics. This is meaning that roller skating will be introduced to the Olympics? Right. We'll, we'll get into the Olympics. Right. Our governing body was saying, they're going to get into the Olympics. We're going to get you into the Olympics. Never happened. Never happened. Eight, uh, 80s came along. So late, uh, late 70s, early 80s, roller skating was the biggest it ever had. I mean, you, you go into a coliseum to watch an event, and there would be 6,000 people sitting around that auditorium watching these events. Um, and, oh, we're going to be an Olympic sport. Never happened. Wow. 90s came along, things started to fall off. 2000s, things really started to fall off. Uh, it, to give you an example of what that was, when Kevin made the world team for the two times that he made it, he didn't spend a dime. Hmm. Our association paid for him to go. Um, but the association no longer is making that kind of money, so now it falls on the parent. And I know of being a parent that uh, that's a you know quite a thing to try to come up with. Okay. But you do, you fight and you go. Uh, is it worthwhile to, to people to do this? Yes, I think in the long run it really is. I, I think you'll you'll find that it, again, it's unlike a team sport, this person is learning how to at a very young age. And every student I've ever had. The parents have come up to me and said, it's amazing the difference in their grades, in their education, mm -hmm. what's going on. Well, your daughter's a, a scientist now, right? Yes. Am I correct on mm -hmm. that? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, she does audiology, and she's doing research on how to get people to hear again. For anybody who is wanting to see, I mean, of course, we're in Bristol, Tennessee, but of course, the United States has many different skate centers, and somebody's like, well, what about in my area? How do I find a coach? How do I learn? to skate, uh, what, what are the resources I go to can you recommend? Well, again, you can you can try sources resources like USARS uh, online. You can USARS, uh, which is the Roller Skating Association for Amateurs, or you can try the RSA. My strongest suggestion, though, is just go to your local rink and ask them about you know their class classes and see what ha develops from there. Um, you know, most rinks now are re redeveloping their programs and redeveloping uh, competitive skating. So, you know, now's the time to go and, and talk to them. Yeah. Uh, so you and I will be doing things in the future, of course. Right. Um, we'll be doing cleaning bearings and talking about different plates, it's different it's types it's of it's skates. Cushions, things of that nature, pivot pins, what, what they actually do, what they don't do. We'll call it the skate shop. So, there we go. Yep. Sounds like a winner to me. All right. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I enjoyed it.